In this video, I'm going to show you how to process a color photograph into black and white. I strongly recommend that when you want to capture black and white photography, you always shoot in color and you always shoot in raw. The color aspect of this is really important as you'll see in this video because we can control the luminance and the mix of the color within the photo. Very important later on in this video. And shooting in RAW gives you the maximum capabilities when it comes to processing your images. That goes for any photograph you're capturing, whether it's black and white or a regular portrait. It doesn't matter, you should be shooting in RAW to get the best results. So before I show you processing color photography into black and white, I want to show you a photo here which is pretty much monochrome. It looks black and white, but it isn't. So this is just some ordinary looking skyscrapers in New York City. And if I click on black and white here, you'll see very little changes. It's, it's hardly even noticeable. In fact, if I gave you this photo and I said it's in black and white, you'd probably believe me. It's not though, it's in color. So that's one way you, you can process in black and white. All I've done here is I've gone to the top section here in basic and I've switched from color to black and white. If the photo looks like it's black and white already, well then you should probably switch it to black and white. We'll go more into details on how to properly process black and white in just a moment, but that's something I wanted to point out. So let's go over now to Lightroom CC, not Classic CC, which we were just in, and I'm going to go over here to the uh, slider icon up here, and I can switch from color to black and white. And you can see here that the profile just switches from color to Adobe Monochrome, and if I select black and white again, it's basically going to unclick that button and it goes back once more to color. More on that in just a moment. So let's go back to this photograph now and I'm going to move on to another photograph which isn't monochrome but it doesn't really have a wide expanse of color ranges. It's quite a dull photo. We've got some reds on this guy, this guy's hoodie here and we've got some green over here in the foreground and a little bit in the background too but this is mostly a dark doll photo. So why not have a look and see what this looks like in black and white. So once again I'm going to click on black and white up here and it can be tempting to say okay black and white that's done now let's move on but remember this is a photograph you lose some of your adjustments over here you don't have hue saturation and luminance, luminance anymore you now have black and white mix which we'll get to but you still have all of the other adjustments and I recommend that you use those. So switch to black and white first, and you can still control your white balance. You can see how the colors are processed to black and white, because notice the color in this image is changing when you change the, black, the white balance. Because the color is changing in that scene, the way the black and white is processed is also changing. So you can adjust the white balance, not something I tend to do. I'd be more likely to start with the highlight shadows, whites and blacks, like I do in basically all of my other photography. So maybe we bring the highlights down, the shadows up, the whites up, the blacks down, add a little bit of clarity, some dehaze. Very quick edit there, I'm even going to straighten this just slightly. It's about right. Very quick edit there, but you can see quite a big difference from where we were a moment ago. And now that I've made these adjustments, I'm going to go down to the most important section for black and white photography after you've done those initial adjustments, and that is the black and white mix. So remember here we had some red, over here we had some green, and a little bit of green in the background. So remember those colors. So red, I'm going to adjust the black and white mix. I can make the red quite white, or I can make it quite black. And you can see by adjusting this slider, I'm just adjusting that red channel of color. Basically nothing else is changing in this image. So I could make it really black, or I could make him stand out a little bit more on that background and make it white. We also have some green, you can see that's going to stand out a little bit. I think it looks quite cool to make it dark. And inside green, there's also going to be a little bit of yellow as well. So watch out for that too. You can make that really dark if you want. So that's how you can make some adjustments. This isn't really how I process this image, but I just wanted to show you how that works. So that takes a, a mostly dull, almost monochrome image, and it turns it black and white. I think it looks a lot better. I'm going to undo some of these changes, but I think that's a lot better than the original photograph, which looked like this. It's much stronger and more powerful with this black and white processing applied. So let's move on now to a slightly more colorful photo once again. So this is in Cinque Terre. Uh, excuse me to the Italians, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. But this is Cinque Terre in Italy. 
And you can see all these beautiful, colorful buildings over here. We've got some blue boats. We've got some yellow, some reds, a little bit of orange over here, green. That's just about every color is in this photo, but it's quite yellow and green heavy. Um, and we also have blue in the water. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to go to black and white. Doesn't look that good at the moment. So I'm going to do my basic processing. Let's bring the highlights down, bring up the, the strength of those clouds in the background. We can put it back to color so you can see what that looks like. Nothing too surprising there. Now let's go to shadows and we can bring that up slightly and then whites and then bring the blacks down. Just like you do your normal processing. Um, I might even bring the exposure down on this slightly. That looks pretty cool as a starting off point. So we've made some basic processing adjustments here. We can also see what it looks like to change the white balance. Again, it looks quite cool in the cloud if you push it to a little bit cooler, but I don't know if it's necessary. I'm actually gonna leave it where it was just so that I still have these colors here, which I know this is red and this is yellow, so I can play with these channels as well. So let's go down now. We have red once again, and I can make it black or I can make it white. Um, and you can do as you were doing in that last photo. I think it looks quite cool to keep it quite dark, um, but I'm cautious that this is quite dark and then this is quite dark. I don't really want to have both sections completely dark, so I'm going to bring it up a little bit. We have the, uh, I think it was a yellow. We can push that, make it really bright. We can bring it down a little bit. We have some green here. We can see the top of the trees over here. We can bring that down or bring it back up. Same as before, really, we're just making different adjustments to different colors. I'm gonna adjust the aqua here as well, which is where the blue in the sea is going to be. So I can bring this all the way down and make the sea look a little bit deeper. And we have some blue, which was over here on the boats, and bring those back up, make them a bit whiter over here. So that's another photo process. Now, before we go any further, let's go over to Adobe Lightroom CC. We're working in Classic here and see what these adjustments look like. So let's take that same photograph again. I'm gonna switch it to black and white. And now you see we have black and white mixer. And um, don't forget, we also have the selection tool. I'll show you this inside Adobe Classic CC as well. And let's say I wanna look at this one here, or maybe this color here. And you can see that the color is actually coming up in the selection tool of which channel we're going to be adjusting. So let's see this one here make that a little bit darker make that a little bit lighter we've got some blues over here make them darker it's pretty much exactly the same you can do it on a channel per channel basis or you can use the target adjustment tool as well and here you see we're going to bring the shadows in this sky a little bit darker so that they stand out as clouds a bit more let's go back now to Adobe Lightroom CC so that same tool is this tool here the target adjustment tool and we can make those same adjustments just like so. Okay, so that's three photos I've shown you so far on how to process in Lightroom. Now we're gonna get a little bit more interesting. So this is a big, bright photo. It's shot in the middle of the day in a desert. There's almost no clouds in the sky and a big blue sky an orange foreground and we have some green and yellow in the trees as well. So I'm not going to adjust the tone section for this one because I don't think it's gonna need it. I'm just gonna switch it to black and white pretty ordinary I don't like how this looks so what can I do with just this section with the black and white mix well let's start off with the sky I can make the sky look really dark that looks ridiculous so I'm gonna bring it back in until I'm happy that this tree isn't standing out too much so we've got a darker sky is standing out a little bit on the background but not too much we have some green in that tree and I want that to stand out a little bit further so I'm gonna push that to the right it's not really doing a whole lot. So instead, I'm gonna try the yellow. You can see that tree is now getting a lot brighter. And if you're not sure on the color, once again, target adjustment tool here. So you can bring this up in the orange as well. But what I actually want to do now is I've got this orange foreground and I wanna make this look a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take the orange slider here. And here you can see we've recovered a lot of the detail that's lost from the bright sun in the sky. Shooting in the middle of the day in the desert doesn't leave you with many shadows, so by using black and white, we're able to recover some of those nasty, harsh, shadowless scenes that can look really bright on your eyes. Sure, we still got the sun up here, we got some lens flare, but we've recovered a lot of the details in this foreground here just by selecting the target adjustment tool 
or just by adjusting the orange slider. So that's a pretty cool photo. Let's have a look at a before and after now. You can see it's quite different. And now while we're on black and white, I'm just gonna turn the black and white adjustment off. And you can see a big difference there as well. So quite powerful just using the black and white mix. Now for the final photograph here, again, I shot this in the desert in Jordan. I think it was the same day. And I shot this knowing that this was gonna be a black and white photograph. Because I've done black and white processing before, my eye is a lot better at spotting a scene that's gonna look great in black and white. So you can see here, we have quite a white and gray trees. Obviously it's just, I don't know if even if it's dead or this is just what trees look like in the desert, but it stands out quite a bit against this dark orange and brown background. And now as I go up and I switch it to black and white, immediately it stands out, but let's see, what happens if I take that orange and I bring it darker? Well now, I think that looks a lot better. I probably wouldn't push it that far, as I tend to not be that drastic in any, anything I do processing wise, but you can see the outline of this tree really pops out now. It stands out on this background and we've got all this texture and that's just by one adjustment. I'm only using one slider here and I've already gotten some great results. Uh, but let's see if we can go any further. I'm gonna use the target adjustment tool here on the ground and we can make it a little bit darker, but I don't know if it needs it, to be honest. I think bring it down just a little bit. There's some magenta in there. And that's a great thing about the target adjustment tool. If you go back and look at this photo, you can see a little bit of magenta, but it's really hard to tell you know, what's magenta, what's orange, what's yellow. Experience helps, and just you know, selecting these sliders and moving them around helps, but target adjustment is gonna be a great way of learning exactly what colors are in what part of your scene. It's not always gonna be green, like you saw previously with that tree, it was mostly orange and yellow, despite it being a green leaf tree. So great to play around with this target adjustment tool. And I think that's about it with this photo. I've only messed around with a couple of different sliders and we've gotten a great result very quickly. I can go through and do the rest of my processing as I, I probably would start there actually. I'd do some highlights and shadows, whites and blacks, contrast, exposure, clarity, um, some uh, dehaze probably as well. But I just wanted to show you that with just a few sliders, you can get some great effects by editing in black and white using Adobe Lightroom Classic CC and CC. CC, Classic CC, in this scenario, really not much difference. I'm showing you mostly Classic CC because that's the software I recommend for you. But just to show you, it is pr pretty much exactly the same in CC, just some of the buttons have moved. So go up here, it's, it now says B and W instead of black and white. And you can obviously make these same adjustments here so that it stands out just like we did in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. So thanks for watching. That is processing your photos into black and white. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below.